Hi there, this is Estelle Toby Goldstein, MD, and they call me the Renegade Doctor. Now, I end up doing a lot of kinds of medicine, but basically I'm a board-certified psychiatrist, so I see a whole lot of psychiatric patients. And I am amazed that psychiatric patients are still complaining about something called stigma, that people think they're crazy or people give them a bad time because they've seen a psychiatrist. This is one of the stupidest things I've ever heard, because it's a lot stupider to need to see a psychiatrist than not see one. But the stupidest thing of all are people who tell me, my husband kicked me out, I, I gotta prove that I'm smart enough to have custody for my kids, because somebody called me manic depressive. Well, manic depressive is no insult. No psychiatric diagnosis is an insult. Psychiatric diagnosis just based on a little old handbook that someone takes and they read who you are and what you are. And really, they think that's what they're reading, but they're not. They're reading if you have problems with sleep and if you have problems with eating. And nobody should be judged on that, and especially not a manic depressive. People act like it's a dirty word and they act like it's a diagnosis, and I say no. I say manic depressive people are more precious and more wonderful than those people calling themselves normal. And I know that because I dearly love American history. And I will tell you right now, this nation was founded largely by manic depressive people. Now, one of my personal favorites is Thomas Jefferson. Some folks have read about him, called him a bipolar too. A very smart guy, read everything that was written in his day and used what people learned in Europe to try to get the country started. But anybody who can get over enthusiastic can also have times they feel down and depressed. Incidentally, he had a little bit of a problem with stuttering and speaking, which is why he wrote the Declaration of Independence instead of reading it. So people who have problems, especially mood swings, never let them get in your way. Another one of my favorite founding fathers, Benjamin Franklin. Ooh, he worked hard and didn't get much sleep when he was printing the newspaper. He was kind of a colorful guy. Liked to flirt with the women in France. Uh, a lot of bipolars are seductive people, and I think he got some of the money for guns to get our country started that way. And when he had his own newspaper in the States, well, he was a colorful guy. They're still wondering if he didn't make up some of the news. We know for sure he wrote in some of his own letters. And after over 300 years, the State Department's still trying to figure out some of the cuter things he pulled off. Abraham Lincoln seems to have been bipolar. Some people think that George Washington was, too. Now, why are there all these bipolars around doing things? First of all, it ain't just in our country. One of my favorite people in history, Winston Churchill, well, the head psychiatrist of the United Kingdom wrote that if he hadn't been just a little on the overenthusiastic, manic kind of side, maybe he wouldn't have done such a darn good job of getting England through World War II. So it's everywhere, and bipolars are special. The gene is still in the population. We select for it. Bipolars marry, and they're usually sexy people who have a bunch of children. And that's okay, because that special spark that people have that may be making them achieve more than other folks is part of the manic part of being bipolar. So, I'm not saying stop your medicines, and I'm not saying run away from your doctors. I'm saying what I have always said. Have a doctor you can communicate and work with. But know that if you're bipolar, this is not an insult. This can be the greatest gift of your life. This is Estelle Toby Goldstein, MD. I'm the Renegade Doctor. I'm at your side. I'm with you. And I want you to never give up and never surrender.